I want to swing back into Florida. This Florida race is particularly important as far as I'm concerned. Because it's illustrative of what the Democrat Party is up to. Andrew Gillum is repulsive to me. As he has dipped his toe repeatedly into anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic actions. And yet, he's tried to turn this campaign into a campaign of race. To try and turn out the minority base in Florida. And it may well be working. He's a radical leftist. He wants to destroy Medicare. He wants to destroy all your private health care systems. All you unions out there who've negotiated for your health care. All this stuff goes away if you have quote-unquote Medicare for all. They use the word Medicare because they know many of you love Medicare. So they're using the word Medicare to destroy Medicare. Medicare for all means an iron-fisted, top-down health care program. That's what they're talking about. Government run. Government run. We don't need a government run health care program. Now this guy, Gillum, is making racial slurs against his opponent, Ron DeSantis, who served in combat He's now saying that DeSantis wrote a book that supports slavery. So I I went back and I read what this guy Gillum is talking about. And it's also up at Hot Air if you want to check it. But I'll append it. He's not supporting slavery in the least. He's explaining what happened. Here's what he wrote. Here's what he wrote. He wrote, and I'm paraphrasing, that what happened at the Constitutional Convention was that they couldn't push the issue of slavery as far as some wanted to push it, although some wanted to push it all the way, that is the abolition of it, because you wouldn't have a United States under those circumstances. You wouldn't have brought in South Carolina, Georgia, and some of these other states. In this, there's no question. That's the history of what took place. That's the history of what took place. Benjamin Franklin was an abolitionist. Alexander Hamilton was an abolitionist. Several of them were abolitionists, but they voted the way they voted because they felt they needed to have a union, and then from there they could address the rest. That's exactly what took place. You know who else took that position 60 years later? Well, 70-some years later, Abraham Lincoln. He explained it exactly the same way, that they had to leave it to their progeny, their children and their grandchildren, to fix this issue of slavery. But if there hadn't have been a union, there wouldn't have been a civil war to eliminate it. That's what DeSantis writes, for all intents and purposes taking up the position that Lincoln took up, taking up the position that Benjamin Franklin and Alexander Hamilton took up. So this guy, Andrew Gillum, says that demonstrates that DeSantis wrote a book defending slavery. Now this man is repulsive, and he's a demagogue. He's lied his way through this election about the undercover FBI investigation, not only of his city, but him. Him. It was a setup when they gave him that ticket to Hamilton. It was a setup when they gave him a a, a hotel room. It was a setup when he got a trip to Costa Rica. And he pretends that he wasn't under or is not under investigation. And if you dare to raise it, you're attacking all African Americans. That's how he shut you down. That's how he shuts you down. But I want to tell you a little bit more about this man, who the Democrats are hanging their hopes on. Barack Obama's in Florida campaigning for him. Joe Biden's in Florida. Hillary Clinton. How can they back a man like this? I would ask MSNBC and CNN, how can they back a man like this, who has a history like this? Aaron Klein over at Breitbart is a good man. The ties between the Israel boycott, promoting 
an anti-police dream defenders group. And the Florida gubernatorial candidate, Andrew Gillum, run deeper than previously reported. Gillum worked at the George Soros Finance People for the American Way. You remember that Norman Lear's group, where he served as director of youth leadership programs from 2005 until 2017. And over that's a long time. And oversaw a radical training outfit calling itself Young People 4 or YP4. Philip Agnew, the co-founder of Dream Defenders, remember that name, Dream Defenders, is a 2005 graduate of Gillum's former YP4 group. Now, Gillum's YP4 gave Agnew the Norman Lear Award, named after the producer and activist who founded People for the American Way. You know that group. Hardcore left wing, trashes constitutionalist nominees to the court. Gillum has faced controversy over his refusal to disavow Dream Defenders, which has engaged in activism to promote the boycott of Israel, espouses anti-patriotic, anti-capitalism, anti-military, and anti-police ideology with which Gillum has already been associated. The Dream Defenders website refers to the entire state of Israel as, quote, the site of a continued settler colonial project, unquote. See, this is all about anti-Semitism, and laments U.S. military aid to the Jewish state. A large section of the site promotes the group's anti-Israel activism. Now, why isn't this being reported on CNN and MSNBC? Instead, they're promoting him. Gillum's Dream Defenders allies compiled an education tool for U.S. teachers about, quote, liberation movements. And that glorifies the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, PFLP, a deadly terrorist organization. Well, I guess he has a lot in common with Obama. Republican challenger Ron DeSantis has repeatedly called for Gillum to distance himself from the Dream Defenders. And during a debate nine days ago, Gillum claimed that he had no idea what DeSantis was referring to when he brought up a Dream Defenders pledge Gillum reportedly signed that supports a radical manifesto. The fact is, Andrew signed a pledge with the Dream Defenders pledging his support. This radical manifesto, DeSantis said during the debate. I have no idea what pledge he's talking about, Gillum replied. So he's a liar. And that's a pattern, whether it's tickets to Hamilton, a hotel room, Costa Rica. It's a pattern, a bald-faced line, because he thinks his supporters and his would-be voters are so stupid, they're going to buy his race-baiting, his Jew-baiting, they're going to buy his lying. Gillum's claim of ignorance about the pledge came despite his already known close relationship with Dream Defenders. Gillum has talked about aiding the group's activism and has written in strong support of Dream Defenders and its co-founder, this fella Agnew, to whom he was a mentor. In turn, Agnew himself recently described a long and close working and personal relationship with Gillum and said he considers Gillum to be part of the movement, quote-unquote. Gillum was taped at a June debate saying that he is pleased and proud to have sneaked food to Dream Defender activists during a 30-day sleep-in protest at the Florida State Capitol. And I can go on and on with this guy. But notice I have to try and expose him with the help of Aaron Klein. Not Don Lemon. Not Jake Tapper. Not Camerata. None of them. Can you imagine Florida electing this guy as the governor? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. 